Okay, everybody, welcome to another lore talk. Today we will be covering the topic of werewolves. What is a werewolf? How dangerous it is? And how to survive in an encounter with a werewolf? We will currently be focusing on J.K. Rowling's version of werewolves, found in her famous Harry Potter series of books. So without further ado, let's dive in. So, what is that which causes your favorite defense against the dark arts, Professor, to shapeshift into an angry dog-like creature and run off into the woods, howling and drooling along the way? Lycanthropy, that's what. Lycanthropy, although often regarded as a curse, is actually an illness, a magical and highly contagious illness. So, now that we know what it is, let's take a look at how does it manifest. Well, a lycanthrope has two modes, let's say. He has a normal human appearance and he has his werewolf form. In his normal human form, a lycanthrope looks just like any other regular person. In fact, he is just another regular person. Well, at least this goes for most of the lycanthropes out there. However, most of these unfortunate individuals age prematurely and are often very tired though it is very possible that this is entirely unrelated to their condition and is simply determined by issues caused by stress and fear following the lycanthropy. Yes, many lycanthropes do live in fear of themselves, which pales in comparison of fear and rejection most of the wizarding world has for them. To quote Mr. Ramos Lupin, one of the most prominent lycanthropes, warrior of the Order of the Phoenix and the bearer of the Order of Merlin, first class. Yes, you have only seen me amongst the Order, or under Dumbledore's protection at Hogwarts. You don't know how most of the wizarding world sees the creatures like me. When they know my affliction, they can barely talk to me. So, to sum up the definition of a werewolf... The definition of the werewolf would be a person afflicted with a magical illness that causes them to transform into a wolf-like creature upon the full moon. While in the transformed state, the werewolf is highly aggressive and it retains no control of his actions. Thus, <coughs> thus this makes for a highly dangerous individual, which is more than capable of killing or infecting others or even his loved ones during this time. Now, let's talk a bit about the wolf form, shall we? As stated, upon the full moon, a transformation will inevitably occur. A lycanthrope has no say in this. Transformation will put a great strain on the body and the mind, and it is described as incredibly painful. A human would start morphing rapidly and growing wolf-like qualities. Skull would lengthen, teeth would grow, body would follow in suit, shoulders would hunch and then expand, spine would lengthen and bend and the extremities would take half animal pose, although their length would increase exponentially. Claws would grow, followed by fur all over the creature's body. The end result might be called a werewolf, but it is unlike any wolf. Short snout, long limbs, ability to move as bipedal, human-like eyes, tough tail, and remarkable speed and strength and ferocity are obvious signs of a werewolf. Horrific part is that the transformed lycanthrope could easily murder his closest family or friends, and although unable to control it, he would recall everything, every single detail upon reverting back to his human form. An example of this would be a fight between Sirius Black and Ramus Lupin. As Ramus was transforming, Sirius was hugging him and begging him to remember who he is. After the transformation, Sirius was forced to transform into a fearsome black hound. Since he was an Animagi, a wizard who has an ability to shift into an animal form, facing Ramus, even in his powerful Animagi form, almost cost Sirius his life. Keep in mind that Remus and Sirius were best of friends. This fight is one of many examples of how powerful and uncontrollable a lycanthrope really can be. Now, you could just say, well, okay, that's pretty bad, but they could 
lock or tie down themselves every full moon and then there would be no problems, right? That would keep others safe, yeah? Well, yes, and uh, no. If we are talking about somebody like Remus, yes. But then, on the other hand, there are people that deal with this affliction in a different way. If we take a look at Remus, he is deeply ashamed and always lives in fear of hurting somebody during his transformation. But there are different people out there. People, for example, like Fenrir, Fenrir Greyback. This person, on the other hand, accepted his lycanthropy as a blessing. And if you would ask me who is Fenrir, I would just describe him as the most vicious werewolf of his time. Uh, let me read you a little quote on the old Fenrir. I saw a werewolf with a Chinese menu in his hand, walking through the streets of Soho in the rain. He was looking for a place called Li Ho Folks, for to get a big dish of beef chow mein. Well, was of London, what is... Sorry, sorry, wrong text. Uh, let's try that again, shall we? <coughs> Fenrir Greyback is perhaps the most savage werewolf alive today. He, reg he regards it as his mission in life to bite and to contaminate as many people as possible. He wants to create enough werewolves to overcome the wizards. Voldemort has promised him prey in return for his services. Greyback specializes in children. Bite them young, he says, and raise them away from their parents. Raise them to hate normal wizards. Quite the character, old Fenrir, huh? Aside from looking like your average space wolf recruit, the story gets worse and darker. See, Fenrir rejected his humanity and openly engaged in sadism, violence and cannibalism. He loved the fact that he was a werewolf and often took advantage of his extraordinary abilities. For you see, Fenrir retained some of his wolf-like qualities in his human form. Strangely enough, he was deadly in combat, stronger and resilient than most humans. With claw-like fingers and sharp teeth, he often ate his enemies. He was also known to serve Lord Voldemort. So, there you go. Voldemort had a canine unit. Who would have guessed? On a more serious note, a lycanthrop like him is responsible for degrading the already tarnished image in the eyes of the wizarding world even further. Now... Prevention and cures. Prevention, don't get bit. No, really, that's the only way. If a werewolf saliva touches your blood, that is it. You will forever be damned to recreate Jack Nicholson's classic once a month. Powdered silver and detony applied to the bite wound will stop the bleeding, saving a victim's life. Although, sadly enough, victims often desire this not to be done. It will not remove the scar though, nor the condition. I'm afraid these are forever. Keep in mind that if you are bit by a werewolf in his human form, you will not become a werewolf yourself. Yes, there will be some changes, for example a fondness for raw meat, and those scars will also not heal, but the affliction will not be transferred. Only a werewolf in his wolf form is capable of transmitting the affliction. Now, there are things that can be done to ease this horrific fate. Uh, well, since werewolves only pose danger to humans, other animals and also any magi are pretty safe to keep them company. This will make an experience far more bearable for the unfortunate victim. There is also a Wolfsbane Potion. Wolfsbane Potion can be brewed, and when consumed, it will allow a werewolf to keep his conscience once transformed. This will make the experience much safer, as the werewolf will not be so aggressive and he will not attack the others. However, the problem is, the ingredients for this potion are very, very expensive. And, aside from the experience being expensive, 
you will actually need a potion master as this potion is very difficult to brew. Now there was word of homorphous charm being able to cure like cantropy, but this was stated by Gildeloy Lockhart and due to his reputation I would take this claim with a grain of salt. Actually, given his reputation I would take it with a salt mine. However, there is a slight possibility of this being true, as Lockhart was known to steal achievements of other wizards. So, if any particularly talented wizard did create this charm, and it worked, that, well, that would revolutionize Ministry's knowledge and the ability to provide help and assistance to the victims of lycanthropy. And this concludes our lesson about the children of the brightest of night. Thank you so much for listening to Law Talk. Stay safe out there and keep your doors locked at those moonlit nights. Until next time, bye-bye.